of jewelry, which is sterling silver, fine handmade crafted jewelry in my Dayton studio for about four years now, full time. That's that's something I've been doing full time. Before that, you know, I did wire wrapping and the basic kind of thing that typical, you know, anybody could do at Joan Fabric or Michaels. Um, and then I'd say about four years ago was when I started elevating it and buying sterling silver and gold and higher price metals. I get some of my stones from various places depending on where I'm at and where perhaps the universe wants to drop them in my lap because that's actually how it happens sometimes. I've had people that I've had a booth set up like I do today and perhaps they are a lapidist and they are cutting the stone themselves and they'll come by and say, would you like to purchase some of my gemstones? And you know they would say, oh, you need to do you know this one and this one. So that's how I've acquired some of them. My aunt owns a crystal shop in Paducah, Kentucky, and she's supplied me with some amazing stones as well. And a lot of mine, though, are handpicked from gym fairs around the state. Not to be terribly hippity dippity, but I would honestly say that I get inspired by what the stone is shaped but like, so I kind of will maybe be conceptual design based on the organic shape of it, or maybe I want to go a little bit more tribal with it and add some blade of uh, sterling silver with it. It just kind of depends. So it's also my mood. <laughs> you know, as an artist, everything kind of ebbs and flows. So I think that it just depends on the day as well. I've been coming to Art on the Commons for two years now. I would definitely say the Fitefic at Kettering Art on the Commons is much higher than all of the other shows I do in the Dayton area. So this is one of my favorite shows to do. It's always been great sales as well, as, as opposed to other shows that I do. I would definitely say that this is one of the best ones. And we couldn't have asked for better weather. So come on down to the Phrase Pavilion and play Gemstone Princess with me. I have done Art on the Commons every year but one. And I was on the uh, Kettering Arts Council in the late 80s, early 90s, so I was part of the committee that helped get Art on the Commons started. I have, for the past 35 years, been making a living doing outdoor art fairs. So uh, I have done as many as 20 or 25 shows a year. I like the fact that it's in my hometown. It's a great venue. I mean, the, com the Commons and the Fray's Pavilion couldn't be a better location for a show. It's just very nice. I uh, use wildlife as a subject matter. I've, uh, I've painted animals for many years, starting out with watercolor, and now I'm painting uh, I'm, I'm painting in acrylic as well as mixed I'm media sorry, and doing me. some collage. But I like the animal theme. I like the shapes, the colors, the textures. And uh, I've been a strong supporter of the Sierra Club in the past. I'm a volunteer at the Cincinnati Zoo. So it all works in part of my work. One thing I would say about art fairs, though, is that they offer a unique opportunity to see a variety of artwork and artistic expression and an opportunity to buy pieces too. So they're they're just they're just a great venue for enjoying um, an outdoor stroll and enjoying the artworks available. That's like a museum you can take stuff home. Yes it is.
Okay, very good. We're gonna be on TV tonight. <laughs> for three years and I uh, am very impressed with just the way it is set up. The crowds that come, the people that come here that are interested in the art and the music is beautiful and they have all types of music and it keeps going all day long. There's a lot of energy in the crowd. <laughs> till around five. Yeah, till around five you didn't write books. You know, so <laughs> and so, uh, no, it's a lot of fun. It is a really nice show. The space from my art, my art, um, I was self-taught. Um, I've learned it all off of the street. All my wood is, my wood frames are all recycled lumber. And the copper wire is also recycled. The plant material, I preserve it, I dry it, preserve it, and then that keeps that color so it does not fade out. And um, I use uh, the glass that the plant material is in between. It's two sheets of glass. Uh, that glass, 95% of it is recycled. I like the space, I like the, the uh, ideas that come to me. I don't ever draw anything up, they just come to me as I'm doing the art, as I'm actually uh, placing the art and putting it together. This is pretty much all tropical plant material. That's from the southern states. Uh, but a lot of the plant material and all the other uh, products, uh, that is from native plant material from the area. And the, the way I do is I microwave dry it. And that's, that dries it really quick. And then I put UV protectants on that to keep it from fading out. It's, it's to draw you the eye. And it's to make you look at the piece of art. And so that there's space, and there's open space, clear space, but yet it'll still bring you into the art, the art that speaks, right. that speaks. The, way, the larger pieces um, that you see that I uh, suggest to hang from the ceiling and out from the walls with a decorative J-hook and chains, and that way you can put lighting behind it at night or use candles as well, and the glass will grab the light from the candles and flicker. Also, if you hang them on the wall, they're actually, um, they, there it seems like there's a larger benefit from hanging them just on the wall, placing on the wall, versus in a window. The window still works when you have a solid backdrop that it, you, you zoom in and then your eye gets to flow around. It's all on pleasing the eye in a way it keeps the, the wire that makes your eye move. I wouldn't just say thank you for all the hard work that everybody does to put the show on. It's an incredible show. It has to take an incredible amount of time. First of all, I do good business here. Uh, also, the people are really nice. Uh, they have volunteers help me set up. They come around and uh, give us water to make sure we don't get dehydrated and fall down. Uh, there's pizza and beer, and that's very civilized for our show. The uh, music is good. The music bounces across the pond. I have to shout at my customers sometimes, but that's okay. It's part of the fun. I've been changing a lot over the years. I used to do stained glass birds and flowers like the Tiffany style. And then I took up glass fusing and glass blowing to make interesting pieces to put in my windows. So I have pieces of spun blown glass, 
I have little garden scenes out of fused glass. It makes them more uh, three-dimensional and uh, unique. and gouache, which is an acrylic watercolor mix. Uh, and then I do a colored pencil overlay, just illustration, kind of building up layers and building characters. So. <laughs> It means kind of learning about the festival in general. I did art on the lawn last year, but all my art was on the ground and it had a table, it wasn't set up very well. So it's kind of becoming a professional in a way, uh, learning the whole system of the art festival and catering to a different audience. I like it a lot better. Uh, this could have to be with uh, my location. I have a big, nice corner spot. A lot of people are here. It's a nice day. It's going pretty well. <laughs>